Hello and welcome to the channel. And today I'm going to demonstrate how to register two endpoints to a Cisco VCS, one with H323 and one with SIP. Then I'm going to call between them to demonstrate the interworking functionality of the VCS and Expressway servers, which we talked about in the last video. So today I'm going to do this on a VCS, but again, the process is exactly the same regardless of whether you're on a VCS or Expressway because, again, except for the licensing, they're basically the same product. So for today's demonstration, I'll need to use a Cisco Telepresence video endpoint. In this case, I'm going to use two DX80s, one for SIP and one for H323. Now what's different about registering endpoints to an Expressway versus a CCM is that on a CCM you have to provision your endpoint before it will register. However, with an Expressway, you'll have to manually configure the endpoint itself. So all of the settings you're going to configure are not going to be on your Expressway, rather they're going to be directly on your endpoint. So to see this, let's go ahead and log in. Now for our first endpoint, you can see straight away that neither H323 nor SIP has registered yet. In fact, they're both showing as inactive. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is activate our services. So we'll come up to Setup and then Configuration. And under the Network Services menu, we can see that SIP mode is turned on, but H323 mode is turned off. These are the default settings, and that's fine for this endpoint because we're going to register this one for SIP. Of course, for H323, we'll need to change that. For now, though, we're set. We've verified that SIP mode is turned on, so there's really nothing else that we need to do under this menu item. Okay, next, let's come down here and click on Provisioning. Now, technically, this step isn't required, but it's considered to be best practice, so it's something that you may want to do regardless. So for connectivity, we'll leave that on auto, and then for mode, we'll want to select what we're registering to. So are you registering to the edge, to the VCS? Uh, are you using TMS for provisioning? Are you registering to WebEx, uh, the CUCM? So you have a lot of options here. Now it's off by default, and if you left it off, you could still register uh, to your VCS or Expressway, but again, it's best practice to just choose one here. So for our purposes, I'll go ahead and choose VCS, and then we can save those settings. Now we're gonna come down and select SIP and configure our SIP settings. Now, most of our settings in here, you can leave as default. For example, display name is not a required setting, so I'm just gonna skip over that for today. In a real environment, I'd, I'd probably put something here though. Okay, so down here, your proxy one address is the IP address of the VCS or Expressway that you want to register to. So if I come back over to my VCS control here, I can see that I have an IP address of 198.18.133.223. So I'm gonna come back and put that in for my proxy one address. Then, uh, if you come down here, make sure your TLS verify is set to off and that the type is set to standard, not Cisco. And then we have to put in a URI. Uh, now this is very important. Uh, this is different from the CUCM in that it has to be a full URI with host at domain. So on the CUCM, you might just use a DN. For example, you might just use 4001, but you can't do that here. It won't register unless you put the domain in there. So I have to go at and then use a domain that exists on my VCS under configuration domains. So the domain I have here is uh, dcloud.cisco.com. So on my endpoint, I have to put at dcloud.cisco.com. And really that's about all you have to configure for SIP. So let's go ahead and save our settings here. And it says configuration saved, so let's uh, go ahead and return to home and view whether we're registered or not. And you can see under SIP, the status has changed from inactive to registered. I can see the address that this endpoint is registered to, and I can see the URI that this uh, endpoint is registered with. So if I go back into my VCS and I go to status, registrations by device, You'll see here that uh, 4001 at dcloud.cisco.com is a registered alias using SIP. A UA is user agent, and uh, you can see 4001 is registered to this endpoint here, 1064, 
port 5061 using TLS. Okay, so that's our SIP endpoint. Now let's configure a second endpoint for H323. So we'll switch over and then sign in. And as you can see, just as before, both uh, H323 and SIP start out as inactive. So again, the first thing we need to do is go up to Setup and then Configuration and then go down to Network Services. And again, uh, we can see the default setting. SIP mode is going to be set to on and H323 is going to be set to off. So since we're going to be doing H323, I'll go ahead and set that mode to on. But I also want to go ahead and set SIP to off because DX80 endpoints can use either uh, H323 or SIP, but not both at the same time. Okay, and then we'll save our settings here. And again, it's not necessary, but for best practices, we can go to provisioning and change the mode to VCS. Or you could do TMS. Uh, you know what? I did VCS last time, so uh, I'll go ahead and set this to TMS this time just to demonstrate that it's still going to register either way. And then we'll click Save. And then from here, instead of going to SIP, we'll go to the uh, H323 menu option. Now for call setup mode, this must be set to gatekeeper. If you change this to direct, then uh, the endpoint will never register. But what I could do is place calls directly from this endpoint just by dialing the IP address of my destination endpoint. But of course, we don't really want to use it in that capacity. So we're going to go ahead and change that back to gatekeeper. And then we need to put in our gatekeeper address. So remember your VCS or your expressway is both your SIP server and your H323 gatekeeper. So I'm going to put that same IP address in there. And then what I'm going to do is come down here and configure my H323 aliases. Now there's two types of aliases that I could put in here. An E164 alias takes a numeric value only. So this would be, uh, for example, uh, 4002. That'd work fine for an uh, E164 alias. I'm going to also put in an H323 ID. Now you don't have to put in both aliases, uh, but I will here uh, just to demonstrate both types. And uh, just to be clear, if you do use both types, uh, they don't need to match in any way. They can be as different or as similar as you like, okay? So again, an E164 alias uses numeric values only. However, an H323 ID can be almost any combination of alphanumeric or special characters, but what it can't include is spaces. So for example, I could not do uh, John Space Smith, but I could do John Smith altogether like that. I could do John underscore Smith, or I could do uh, John dash Smith. Uh, any of those would work. I could also do something like uh, John Smith at domain if I wanted to add a domain on there so that it looks like a URI, similar to SIP. Uh, it's not a URI because I'm not required to put a domain in there, but I could do that. And just to clarify, if I did decide to use that format, it wouldn't need to match uh, the domains that are configured in the VCS uh, like they are with SIP. Therefore, I could just do anything. I could do John Smith at Cisco.com. Or I could do John at Smith.com or John at Smith.Smith. .smith. Or even just John at Smith. Uh, it doesn't matter because it's not really a URI. I'm not qualifying the domain. Now, having said that, sometimes it does make sense to use a specific format when you're configuring an H323 ID so that your addressing is uniform across endpoints. So for this example, I'm going to say uh, 4002 at dcloud.cisco.com because remember our SIP endpoint is 4001 at dcloud.cisco.com. Okay, so we'll do that just to maintain continuity and uh, interoperability across our endpoints because they are using different protocols. Okay, so now that all those settings have been configured, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and click Save. And again, we'll go up to Home and then we can see our H323 registration status. So we can see here that we're registered and we're registered to this gatekeeper and uh, these are the two aliases that I'm registered with. Okay, so then if we go back to our VCS, then go up to status, then registrations, and then by device, then I'll see these two aliases registered here for this one device. So it's registered as 4002 at dcloud.cisco.com and as 4002. 
And this is the IP address of the device and the port it used to register for H323, port 1719. I could also go to status, registration, by alias. This gives us the same information, but instead of showing us one device per line, it's showing us one alias per line. Okay, so once those endpoints are registered, I can call between them. So I'll go back to the first SIP endpoint that we configured and I'll select call control. And I can dial 4002 and I don't have to put in at dcloud.cisco.com because SIP endpoints will automatically append the domain at the end of the alias. So I could just press call and I'll see the endpoint calling if I go to the H323 endpoint. I can go to call control and I should see the incoming call. So here it shows as ringing and I can click the connect button and now the call is connected. I'm going to go ahead and disconnect though uh, so we don't get any feedback. Now if I try to call in the other direction using that same method, just 4001, uh, this call is going to fail uh, because I'm calling from an H323 endpoint and it won't automatically add the domain like it does with SIP. So if we click call, we see no participants connected and that call failed immediately. But if I go uh, 4001 at dcloud.cisco.com and click call, the call is ringing so we can go back to the first endpoint and answer that call. And then that call connected just as before. Okay, so that's H323 and SIP interworking on a Cisco VCS. Uh, that'll do it for this video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. Otherwise, that's it for now. I'll see you in the next one.